played for you. Yeah, what a, what a sad moment, um, Bob. I only had a chance to coach Malik for about a little over a half a year in Detroit. Wonderful guy, great spirit and energy, and the thoughts, prayers, sympathy go out to his family and his friends. What a tragedy. And now, as must be the case, on the business at hand, and a look at the lineups. As Rasheed Wallace peels off his warm-up. Shaquille O'Neal averaged just under 30 points for the season, averaging just under 30 in the playoffs, but he averaged only 20 and a half and never topped 23 in any of the four games against the Trailblazers. Stoudemire may very well start out covering Kobe Bryant. That may almost be to lure the Lakers into getting the ball into Bryant's hands more often than into Shaq's. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Now we check with Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Everybody's talking about all these matchups between these two teams, but the matchup everybody wants to see is the one between Kobe Bryant and Scottie Pippen. Now, I talked to Kobe about that before the game, and he said, yes, these are the kind of situations that he lives for, these kind of challenges. He realized he's going to push Scottie to another level and show Scottie that he can also rise that level himself. Now, when I asked Scottie about that, Scottie said, well, someone needs to tell Kobe that those six championship rings I have, I did not find them on the side of the road, and I'm looking forward to getting my seventh. Bob. Ahmad, thanks a lot. Talking about the depth of the Blazers. No Blazer was in the league top 40 in scoring, but all five starters averaged double figures. No Blazer had a single game this year in which he scored as many as 35 points, but 10 different members of this squad led them in scoring in at least one game. Bob, just to, to follow up a little bit about the matchup you talked about. Kobe Bryant will guard Stoudemire. Stoudemire will guard him, which you said will maybe lure a little bit of that. That's fine if they can keep the ball away from Shaq. Now, why is Kobe not matched up against Pippen? Why isn't Pippen guarding Kobe? Because they want Pippen to roam defensively and be a part of those groups that help slow down Shaquille O'Neal. So here is Bryant on Stoudemire after the Blazers win the opening tip. Shaq follows Sabonis out high. They get it to Pippen Law, and Harper, his former teammate, knocks it away. Here comes Rice to lay it in. Phil Jackson said to Glenn Rice before the series, we need you. Big numbers. We need you to hit the shot. Well, that's what gets shooters off. Easy layups. Let's keep our eye on Rice. Wallace may have Green overmatched in this series and scores on him here. Well, that's there for him all day. If he will just take his time, he has the size, the speed, the quickness. All he has to do is be patient. At 36, A.C. Green couldn't really contend with Chris Webber in round one or with Cliff Robinson in round two. Now he's got to try to deal with Rasheed Wallace. Shaq cross-court to Harper, left alone for three. Ron Harper was out before the game early shooting three-point shots. Why? Because of that right there. Because he knows Scottie Pippen is going to be in the double teams. He's going to be open. He has to hit those shots. Shaq respecting Sabonis' outside range, and there's a whistle. The officials are Ron Garretson, Mike Mathis, and Bob Delaney. Foul on Kobe. It's a tough matchup for Kobe Bryant. He's a tremendous defensive player, but at 6'7", and Stoudemire about 5'10", or 5'11", and so herky-jerky off that dribble, he is tough to defend on that outside. They look for Wallace against Green. He spins on him and scores. Now, A.C. Green starts the game, but you're going to see Robert Ory for the majority of the minutes. So right now, A.C. is just buying some time until they come off the bench with Ory. Shaq, his first shot, and off balance... <laughs> he has a wide repertoire. We haven't seen that one until now. Wallace again off the dribble against Green. A whistle and they're walking the other way. The foul is on Portland. It's Wallace's first. Well, Mike Dunleavy sure does not like that call. He's talking to Mike Mathis. Felt that A.C. Green should have been charged with a foul. So, felt like he dipped that left shoulder, created the contact. Green with a long one. How about this now? You've got Harper with a three, Rice with a layup, A.C. Green with a jumper. Great news right now for the Lakers and Phil Jackson, the way they've gotten started with their balance. 
Stoudemire, jumper over Kobe. See, that's the, it's so difficult to guard Bob because he may be able to stop quicker and go up for a shot than anybody in the NBA. That is a tough shot to make. The Lakers have hit all four field goal attempts. They've tried. And now there's a Portland foul. It's Pippen's first. Take a look here at Stoudemire. The, the herky-jerkiness that we talked about, Bob. And watch how quickly he stops, plants himself, and gets that shot off before Kobe can get that 6-7 frame and that long arm out to bother his shot. That's why he was able to lead them in scoring in the regular series against the Lakers. three-pointer and O'Neal over the back for the foul. Which one of the big guys can stay out of foul trouble? They love it, the fact that if they can block out O'Neal, speaking of Portland, that maybe he will come off the, over the back and get a foul. That's exactly what happened there. Well, with Sabonis and with Jermaine O'Neal off the bench and with Rasheed Wallace and Brian Grant in short stretches against Shaq, they have lots of fouls to use. Pippen emphatically to the hoop. You know, for normally a game like this, Bob, you see tension, and where you normally see it is in the offense. The offense is very sputtering. That's not the case. Very fluid offense by both teams, and they feel each other out here to start this series. Interception by Pippen. And he takes it all away. See, I really believe he's going to be important for Scotty to score. I know he likes to facilitate and distribute the ball and, and gamble defensively. I think you're going to need 16 points a game from this series out of Pippen. The Blazers lead at 10-9. Bryant with the height advantage on Stoudemire. Can't hit it. Green on the offensive glass. Kobe gives it back to Green who's open. What did Phil Jackson tell us before the game? He said, not so much rebounding, but extra possession. Who gets the loose balls? That time it goes to the Lakers, they get two points. Here's Wallace with his own rebound. And then back outside to Sabonis. Steve Smith, his first touch. Ball loose, Smith comes up with it, Pippen fires. And he's got a three. So off to a great start. Now remember, Scotty hit the three to eliminate Utah the other night. Down two, he hits a big three. And when he was with Chicago, he was not called on to make those shots. That was number 23, Michael Jordan's job. Rice for three, and a whistle. Smith lunged out at him, fouled him, and Rice is going to shoot three free throws. Number one on Smith. When we talked to Phil Jackson before the game, he said they have got to be able to get something from this matchup. You see the foul here as Steve Smith goes under him and just hits him with the, with the hand on the leg. It's a touch foul, but Steve Smith, Smith knows better than to commit that kind of little touch foul. Smith and Rice certainly familiar with each other. They played against each other in high school in Michigan, then in the Big Ten. Rice at Michigan and Smith at Michigan State. They were teammates with the Miami Heat for a while, so had to go against each other in practice. And now in this series. Well, they know each other very well, and they know what they love to do on the floor. They're going to try to take away those strengths. Bob, the, to, to along the lines of Phil Jackson once again, he talked about maybe running some plays for Glenn Rice to get him going, rather than have him drift out there and get lost in the offense. And I think you're seeing him be very aggressive to start this game. Tied at 13. Pippen has seven of those 13 Trailblazer points. Stoudemire got all the way to the rack. Keep Shaq involved in screen roll. That's what Sabonis does. Now, why doesn't Shaq help? Because he's worried about Sabonis rolling out and shooting that jump shot. Kobe. Trying to dribble out of the double team. Now finds Harper. Off the fake, the jumper. Spins out. And little Stoudemire has the rebound. Pippen pulls up for three. Rebound green. Harper around. Pippen confronted by Sabonis. He can't finish it. But O'Neal can. Yeah, what a powerful rebound. And Sabonis has got 
to stay away from any touch fouls. Now, there's no reason that Scotty Pippen should get broken down on the perimeter from Harper and let him get inside like that, Bob. Yeah, that was surprising. Here's Stoudemire trying to use that quickness, but his pass squirts through the hands of Rasheed Wallace. 5.58 to play. Former coach Bill Jackson had this to say about Pippen's importance to his team in this series. And I don't think many people would dispute this. Well, you know, Bill always loves to play the little games, and, and I think what he's trying to do is put a little pressure on Scotty. Well, Scotty's responded. You see the powerful drive there and the strong finish. This is what he does best. Get in the passing lane, those long arms, get the steal and get the easy score in the open court. He comes down later on, squares up and shoots the three-point shot. Ball comes out to him. No hesitation at all. He shoots the three. So off to a great start. And I think you would expect this from him with this team. Get them on the road off to a great start. And I know Ahmad had a chance to talk, uh, talk to him before the game. Ahmad, what do you have to say? Yeah, Doug, you know, I've been around Scotty for quite some time. I've seen him in a supporting role. I've seen him in a leadership role. But I have never seen him as comfortable as he is now with this team, this Portland Trailblazer team. He felt like they really could come out here and win. And as you watch the way he's playing, he's showing that he's the guy with all the championship rings and he can lead the these guys are the promised land. Yep. Ahmad, thanks. Doug, how important is it that Pippen knows the triangle offense in terms of what he does defensively as Bryant hits the baseline fadeaway? Well, I think it's very important because he knows where the trigger points are and where when the ball gets in certain situations, where it puts most pressure on the defense and where he can help with that. So he'll know where to pick and choose to do that as Stoudemire misses the layup there as he breaks down to Bryant off the dribble. Which he's done a couple of times already. Rice, catch and shoot, got it. The three-pointer gives him seven. You know, Glenn Rice told his wife yesterday, he said, you know what, as a basketball player right now, I'm in uncharted waters. I've never been here at this point in my career. But when I'm in uncharted waters, I like to leave my mark. Smith backing in. Then outside to Wallace for three. Overshot it badly. But it goes off Harper's hands. At least that's the way it looked to me and a good number of the others. But apparently it was touched last by Portland. Well, that looked to me like it was definitely off the Lakers. Lakers are on a 7-0 run. Shaq against Sabonis. With five now on the 24. O'Neal, the jumper. Stoudemire lost it. Bryant comes up with it and lays it in. See, you don't want to give Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal those kind of easy scores. You want them to have to work hard for everything. Shaq took a tough shot. Stoudemire couldn't get the rebound. Kobe picked it up and laid it in. Of course, that was easy for Bryant because he's capable of those mid-air gyrations. Steve Smith, left unattended, does what he does so well. He hits the jumper for three in this case. Well, normally Steve Smith likes to come out and have a big first quarter. The Lakers know that. They're really identifying him very early on the defense. Lakers by four. Harper's pass deflected by Pippen. Now the jumper by Harper. Off the back iron. And it's Scotty who goes to the floor to scoop it up. to Wallace and Rashid swishes it from the head of the key. How about this for talent? Couple post up, he goes in, just jumps over the top of the power forward. This time screen roll, he rolls out and hits the jump shot. You talk about a young man with some talent. AC Green. Now Kobe spinning baseline. Trying to give it back to Green. Ball loose in the lane. Shaq comes up with it. And now it's Stoudemire. Steve Smith with Rice on him. Loves the baseline move here. You got to keep him off that baseline. And a foul is called. It'll be on Rice. It'll be his first. 2.49 to play in the first. The Laker lead is two. Kobe Bryant is 6'7. Damon Stoudemire is 5'10. We asked Phil Jackson about that matchup. Well, we have to have Kobe being very loose, very free, very active, and take advantage of what he has. Now, if they start like they did all year with, uh, you know, Stoudemire on Kobe, 
you know, that's a carrot in front of a horse. I mean, they're, they're going to have to pay at some level for that. So we think that in, when you have an advantage like that, you got to take advantage of it. It doesn't mean that Kobe's throwing off our balance. It's the best advantage on the court. I think when you saw that last possession, you saw that as he was posted, Scottie Pippen was coming down hard to double team. Kobe Bryant recognized that, spun away from the double team and got the score. The one thing you're going to do, if you're going to post Kobe like that, the Blazers must make sure they keep Shaquille O'Neal off the offensive boards. They do not want him to touch that ball when he comes down on that offensive end because he just punishes your defense. So I still think it's going to be a fine line with the Lakers about how much they go to that and how much they uh, leave Shaq away from those primary post-ups. Here's Steve Smith, guarded by Harper now, looking to work on it. Find Stoudemire for three. Just before the shot clock, he's off with it. It rolls right to Mike Dunleavy on the Portland bench, and the ball will belong to the Lakers. Meanwhile, Arvidas Sabonis has played this entire game, so that's nine and a half minutes to this point. Zeros across the stat line. You would think, given his age, 35, and his various aches and pains, he'd have a better chance to perform well in game one with three days rest than in game two, which is a quick turnaround to Monday night. Well, I agree that. I think his presence out there, though, has kept Sha Shaq so occupied defensively that other guys have flourished with that. Kobe misses, Wallace rebounds. Stoudemire had to arc it high and did it off the glass. Again, there, there's another thing you just talked about, Bob. Now, Sabotis did not take that shot. But it's so difficult for Shaq to lay back in that paint and get down there and help because he is concerned about Sabonis shooting the jumper. So the presence there helped the Blazers get that score. And now they are on a 7-0 run and have tied the game at 22. But not for now, if you think about it, Shaq has a shot that he came across the middle that was a difficult shot, and he has two dunks in the game. You want to limit his dunks, his layups. He's got Smith on a switch, and Steve hits over him. Very good low post player. Now, when he was in Atlanta, they used to go down on that block all the time, and at 6'8", he could elevate, and also he's a tremendous free throw shooter if you foul him down there. Kobe, Wallace over to help, and a foul. That'll be number two on Rasheed Wallace, and every time he begins to talk to an official, you wonder how close he is to a tee. A great roll out there by Shaq. He felt the pressure from Sabonis on the backside. He rolled away from the pressure. The great pass from Kobe Bryant. Rasheed Wallace is off to a great start. And now he has to sit down with his fouls. Now, Brian Grant is in the game. Probably more active and healthy than he's been all season long. A tremendous offensive rebounder. Grant is the first substitute off either bench. Bryant sliding inside, and Grant fouled him. So the man he replaced sat down with two fouls, and it took Grant only a few seconds to pick up his first. Kobe averaged 22 and a half for the season, 24 and a half so far in the playoffs. And you can log on to NBA.com and follow today's game with Sync TV, a live online companion to each playoff broadcast. This unique component provides fans with real-time stats, polls, news, and the ability to interact with other fans online. NBA.com Sync TV, your cutting-edge way to follow every NBA playoff game. Kobe makes two, and it's the Lakers by two. Steve Smith backing in on Bryant for the jumper. Can't tie the game, and Shaq rebounds. See, I like that, though. Portland went right back to the play that worked before. Make them try to stop. At that time, he did not hit the shot. Shaq deep against Sabonis. Misses the jumper. The rebound to Grant. Shot clock off, last 20 seconds of the quarter. Steve Shaq now helps on this screen roll or be so worried about Sabonis that Steve Smith can get the shot. Harper reaching in for the foul. They had a foul to give. And so it's Portland ball from the side. 
Portland has hit 61 percent of its field goal attempts in this first quarter, but they haven't attempted a free throw. Well, I felt going into this series, the team, if Portland was going to win this series, they had to win the free throw line, not necessarily in attempts, but they had to make more per game, and they had to win that three-point line. That's what was good in both series. They won the free throw line and the three-point line in the two previous series. Now watch Pippen getting this ball back if he tries to get back in bounds for the shot. Just five seconds. It's Smith. He hands it to Grant. Less than two seconds to get off a shot. Harper from beyond midcourt. Well, these teams played four games head-to-head -head this year. Dead even, two and two. Each one once on the other's home floor. After 12 minutes of game one of this best of seven, tied at 26. The second quarter in the front page of the Orange County Register today. I thought a creative headline here, Bob. Two deep Lakers versus two deep Portland. What were they talking about with that? When we take a look at the scoring, look, games as high score this year. Look at Portland and how it was divided out over the course of the season. Then when you roll to the Lakers, that's 10 different players, actually, that were the high scores. Now you go to the Lakers. Look at this. O'Neal, 60. Kobe, 18. Rice, 6. So that's what they were talking about. Now, Glenn Rice has gotten off to a great start. He's the guy that Phil Jackson said had to score for him. Seven points, gotten them out quickly. The big three, 19 of the 26 points. But A.C. Green, a couple shots. Harper, a big three. Good balance, off to a good start. And remember, as we look at the Blazers' balance, some of those six games where Rice led in scoring were because Kobe was out with an injury or somebody was suspended or missed a game for whatever reason. Well, and, and let's make no you know, bones about it. The Lakers are built as Shaq being the number one option, Kobe being number two, and Rice number three. And when those guys do their jobs and they get the role players playing the way they're supposed to play, they're 67 and 15 on the season. That's why they are where they are with the home court advantage. Phil Jackson to his bench at the start of the second quarter. Ori came in right at the end of the first. He's joined now by Rick Fox and Brian Shaw. Bryant and Shaq still on the floor for the Lakers. Shaw back to Shaq, who just slides by Pippen, who understood when it was futile to try to contest him. Well, they said he flopped. They said, Sabonis, we're not going to give you that call. You're going to have to hold your ground. Now, had he got that call, that would have been Shaq's second foul. That would have been very important. Sabonis' pass deflected out by O'Neal. No one is as big as Shaq, but Sabonis is the opponent who comes closest. He's actually taller at 7'3", and he weighs nearly 300 pounds himself. Pippen's baseline jumper isn't there. The rebound to Robert Orr. Lakers up two and with the ball. Excellent block out that time by Robert Orr, playing great basketball for the Lakers off the bench. Bryant spinning into traffic and laying it in. See, Damon Stoudemire has got to protect that baseline. Bob, his double team is coming from the top. That double team cannot get there if Stoudemire lets him spin baseline and beat him there. He's got to force him to the double teams. Shaq and Kobe each have eight. They're the game's high scores. Stoudemire. Dishes it out to Grant and now Pippen, who misses the three. Grant there for the tip. Now that's Brian Grant at his best. Not a primary option, but a guy who's going to be relentless on the offensive backboard. The Lakers know that. They've got to block him out. Perhaps still bothered by a balky left knee. Grant had an off season, but two strong games as Robert Orrey cans the three. Two strong games, speaking of Grant, to close the Utah series. Now you talk about Robert Orrey. He's now 10 of 21 from the three-point line in the playoffs. Brian Grant has to know that and get up and make him dribble the basketball. A whistle before this shot by Stoudemire, which will not count. Foul is on Shaw, his first. Bob, during that little reset here due to the foul, Mike Dunleavy pulled Brian Grant over to say something to him. And I guarantee you said, you've got to make Robert Ory put the ball on the floor to disrupt his rhythm. He's their best three-point shooter in the playoffs this year. Now Dunleavy takes out both Sabonis and Stoudemire. 
Greg Anthony in for the first time. Detlef Shrimp also in. Now they've got a small front line. You're talking about Detlef Shrimp and Brian Grant to go to Shaq. Can Shaq punish this front line? Here's Grant from 20. Rebound to Kobe. See if they go to Shaq here, Bob. He's got a smaller player on him. They go to him right away, and he makes it work. I don't know if Dunleavy can play this. Rasheed Wallace has got two fouls. Sabonis played a lot of minutes. He might have to go into Jermaine O'Neal. Shrimp and Brian Grant cannot play Shaq inside. Grant is 6'9 and about 250. Giving away all kinds of height and bulk to Shaq. Smith tried to get it to Shrimp, who lost it. Fox may have been guilty of a travel, and it went overlooked. To work on Grant again, and Grant fouls it. They call it a jump ball. Wow. Well, how many possessions did Mike Dunleavy wait to get Rasheed Wallace back into the game? While we talked, the NBA is a game of matchups. Mike Dunleavy very unhappy felt that Rick Fox had walked on this end. Now, one of the officials, I think, called a foul. Another one called a jump ball. We'll see what happens here. So I think they're going to call the jump ball. But immediately, when this small lineup went in, Shaq said, give me the basketball. He scores the first possession. This time, a great block by Brian Grant. We'll have a jump ball after the timeout. The Lakers lead by seven, and you can see exactly the power of Shaquille O'Neal. Now, Sabonis is a big, strong man. Little left arm he puts up there. Sabonis rocked back on his heel. No call. And then look what happens when Brian Grant gets in the game. Shaq immediately goes to him. The quick spin, the great footwork. And look what he bangs him. He just rocks him. It's the power of Shaquille O'Neal. And you know what? When something works, you go right back to it once again. This time, Brian Grant gets beat on the play, but he does not quit. He goes up, and he forces the jump ball. wins the tap. Robert Ory driving on Wallace and a whistle in the basket count. It will. Now, more importantly, that's going to be Rasheed Wallace's third foul. A critical play on Wallace. This time he gets up on Robert Ory, who hits the three, who beats him on the dribble. So Ory's offensive explosion here has gotten the Blazers in trouble. The bump by Wallace, the tremendous over-the-shoulder, off-the-glass shot by Robert Ory. Remember, this guy has two championship rings and was big when he was in Houston shooting the three and defensively playing on that front line with Elijah Wan. That brings Sabonis back, Wallace out. He set a dubious NBA record with 38 technicals during the regular season and five more in the playoffs. He was ejected six times, and he said something to Ron Garrison as he was leaving, but not enough to get teed up. Let's think about now the power forward position for the Lakers. We said that the Blazers had to win that convincingly. A.C. Green and Ori already had 10 points combined. That's bad for the Blazers. He did get the... Did he, Harry got his second call. Was called on Wallace from the bench. Ron Garrison let him hit his say once. This time he said, I'm going to stop you. I'm not willing to say anything else. So Rasheed Wallace now knows the next one, and I'm out of here. And do you really think that'll stop him? No, I don't, because I think when he gets into those moments, I think he just sort of short circuits. I think his teammates try to hold him back. I think Mike Dunleavy, I think the assistant coaches, but I think he so gets into what he's doing with the referees, he doesn't hear anything else that's going on around him. And it's a shame, Bob, because he's a tremendous talent, and this is what's preventing him from being one of the premier power forwards in this game. He's holding himself back. Here's Greg Anthony sliding along the baseline and finding Smith, but Smith was out of bounds as he received the pass. By all accounts, back to Rasheed Wallace, he's a very cordial young man off the court. But this has been going on for a while now, over several seasons. This is ridiculous. I, I, I love his talent. I, I just wish he could find a way to leave that other stuff alone, staying away from the officials, because he is a great, great player. Ori, feeling it off the bench. It 
Broncos tied at 26. Now a steal. Bryant looking for the opening. He finds it in Fox. Another three. It was tied at 26 at the quarter. The Lakers have outscored Portland 18 to 2 in the second. And lead by 16. The bench has come in. And remember the headlines. Too deep. Well, you know what? The shots have been too deep for the Blazers. now by 16 8 10 to go in the second period and it's been the play of the bench robert glory hits another three-point shot he has two three-point shots and a three-point play for nine points greg anthony was going to get a timeout he kicked the ball off his ankle turned it over and it resulted in this three-pointer for rick fox bob i don't know about you but i think the lakers may have been taking this bench and too deep thing too personal right now because 12 to 4 bench scoring for the Lakers over Portland and you know what Portland has come unraveled as Scottie Pippen has sat down they need some leadership right now deadless Trump into Sabonis he wraps it around to Grant for the dunk Sabonis is a tremendous passer so if you're going to double team him you've got to close down passing lanes as you see Kobe Bryant getting a well-deserved rest he sits for the moment with eight points Playing a game of catch with Shaq, who takes it into the lane and hits the little hook. If you've noticed out of the double team, Shaq is either giving it up quickly or going quickly into his move. He's not holding the basketball. O'Neal has 12. Anthony missed it off the glass. Rebound to Fox. Derek Fisher on the floor for the first time. Brings the dribble to the front court. O'Neal in the lane. Three defenders. Can't hit. Rebound Grant. Wells making his first appearance on the dribble against Shaw and he lost it here come the Lakers after another Portland turnover Derek Fisher missed what would have been a two-pointer are playing tremendous defense right now and they have really frustrated the Blazers. You see right there, that's Ori. He's gifty on that leg from the previous possession, but you know what? He sucks it up and he makes the play to get his team possession of the ball. He's still hobbling a bit, but he doesn't want to come out. He's hot with nine points. Oh, that's a great point, Bob. When you're shooting and say, give me the ball. In this case, he misses. Here's Pippen just back in. He claims the rebound. Shrek. This one will be a block. That's already second foul, and again, he shows himself willing to sacrifice his body. Wow, very close that time as Deadlift Shrimp drives in there. Robert Ory, another good position play. That time, Mike Mathis felt that he was slightly moving, and he got called for the blocking foul. Portland is shooting 56%, yet they're trailing by 16, partly because they're guilty of seven turnovers to L.A.'s one. Sabonis was open, but before his shot, Mike Mathis stops playing. It's going to be illegal defense, and that's one of the things that Mike Dudley be sort of planted a seed as we started this series. He said Shaq is illegal. He does not come out of the paint. But the Blazers will be patient and get Sabonis out there with his spacing. Maybe they can expose that and get Shaq out of the lane where they can operate. Dunleavy's quote was, the Lakers have a lot of nerve talking about illegal defenses, the way Shaq just stands in the middle all the time. This one's on Brian Shaw, his second. They see Shaquille O'Neal is going to drop down underneath the basket. Look where Sabonis is. Nobody's guarding him. If Shaq is going to get down there, they're going to have to get a quick defensive switch and get Ori out to cover uh, Sabonis on the perimeter. He was slow getting out there. Bonzi Wells, his first shot is no good. Move inside six minutes. 
Wells knocked it away, pleading with Bob Delaney that Shaw touched it last, but Delaney was right on the play. Didn't see it that way. You know, Bob, one of the things that the Lakers have done so well in the playoffs is take care of the ball. They are averaging less than 12 turnovers a game in their 10 playoff games. Tonight, you talked about it before, a real key. They only have one. Touched last by Portland. Laker ball, 10 on the shot clock. And the Lakers ask for time. 5.48 remaining until halftime. L.A. up by six. Against Shaquille O'Neal. This man is so big and strong. What is flopping and what is good defensive position? Look at Vladi leaning on him with everything he's got. We're going to draw this little line in here. I mean, he's Velcroed to him. He turns in there and rocks him. Look at the space and the score. Then in the next series, it was Luke Longley. Watch his right arm. <laughs> Jack leans in. He rocks him on his heels. Now look at the space that's created for that shot. And then today, once again, this time in this series, it's Sabonis, another big strike. Strong man, but again, what is flopping and what is holding your ground? It is so hard to referee against this man because of his size and his power. The Lakers have outscored the Trailblazers 20 to 4 in the second quarter. And with five on the shot clock, play is stopped. Dennis Schrempf is hit with his first. I always like to watch body language early in series, early in games or whatever. Right now there's a lot of time left for Portland. Their whole thought should be let's get this under 10 going at a half. We've, we've had a big surge from the Laker bench. Let's just hang in there and cut into this lead. Rice from Shaq for three. Glenn Rice was held in check in all four games against the Trailblazers this year. Came into this series shooting less than 39% in the playoffs. He turns 33 in about a week. He is playing for next year's contract as well as for a title. Stoudemire misses. And it's Rice who comes out of there with the ball after it was tipped to him. See, one thing that Shaq has really improved on, Bob, is his passing out of the post. He creates so many shots. He got that last three for Rice. Paint thought about it, gives it up to Ori. Now he has it back. Sabonis forces him a bit away from the hoop. Little jump and the jumper. Doesn't get the bounce. The rebound to Pippen. Sabonis thought about a three, had the shot disrupted. Now it's Bunzi Wells. Late short. Now can you see what they're doing defensively? They're keeping Shaq in the paint and running Ori at Sabonis to take away that shot. off the bench with 12 now. I don't think the Lakers fans have liked this too deep stuff. I think they felt they've been tremendously insulted. Robert Ory has been amazing in this first half. He has hit three three-pointers. 22nd timeout. A terrific first quarter that was 26 all. You see what Robert Ory is in the game, plus 20 in the game. But but Bob, in this quarter, it was 26 all, so it's 26 to 4 right now in favor of the Blazers, and we played less than eight minutes in this quarter. The minute Pippen went to the bench, they really came unglued. Here is Stoudemire giving it up to Pippen. Now Shrimp against Bryant. Stoudemire splits two defenders, lays it off to Shrimp, who connects. But how do you hold a team like Portland? I understand the Lakers being red hot. How do you hold Portland to six points in eight minutes? O'Neal from Ori, but they take it away. Well, they've done a nice job forcing turnovers. They've been able to defend in the low post. They've gone to Bonzi Wells a lot. He really hasn't been able to deliver. And the flow uh, of the uh, Portland offense really got out of sync when Mike Dunleavy went to his bench. You see Savona stepping in and taking that charge against Robert Ory. Only the second Laker turnover as the charge counts the turnover, but Portland returns the favor immediately. It's a totally unforced error that time. That's a very careless play by Damon Stoudemire. And again, I go back to what Phil Jackson told me before the game. He says, Doug, the team that has the most possessions are going to win. And look what's happened. The Lakers assist, what they've done turnover-wise. 
13 to 2 assist to turnover tremendous ratio Robert Ori off the bench 12 points and we talked about that matchup also to the power forward Rasheed Wallace in foul trouble and the power forwards from the Lakers are convincingly winning the matchup Shaw into the lane to the left hand been guarded by Rice Scotty spins around him. Nice move. See, Scotty's going to have to take that ball and right now be the leader. He's going to have to settle his team down. He's going to have to get him a little bit of a run here in the last three minutes, but they've got to stop him defensively. Right now, the Lakers are scoring at will. Portland's expectation was not just that they would win that power forward matchup, but that they would win it overwhelmingly. Kobe had it knocked away on his way to the hoop, and there's a Portland foul. Nobody expected, and we still don't expect it over the course of the whole series it'll be this way, but nobody would have expected Rasheed Wallace's numbers to be less than the combined power forward numbers of the Lakers in this first half, and by a wide margin. Well, he got himself in foul trouble. He got off to a good start. He has six points, but Ori's got 12, and A.C. Green has got four. That's 16-6 to six in favor of the Lakers. There's no way Portland can win the series if that continues. Now, you can say Shaq's not involved defensively or whatever it might, I mean, offense or maybe not Kobe, but Bob, I mean, you, you cannot allow these guys off the bench uh, to put those kind of numbers up. Bryant makes them both after foul number one on Stoudemire. Lakers by 22. Nice assist by Arvidas Savonis. He is a wonderful passer. He's one of my favorite guys to watch play. He just can pass the ball. He sees the court. He can shoot the ball. You can only imagine what he was like 10 years ago when his legs were fresher and healthier. Kobe, catch and shoot. Got it off the baseline. He has 12. As do Ori and O'Neal. Mike Dunleavy's going to have to think about that matchup with uh, Kobe and Stoudemire. I don't think that's going to work. Rice is right behind with 10, so balance scoring for the Lakers. Stoudemire again arcs it high and misses this time. was last night's New York-Miami final. The Lakers have 60 points in that. Well, I was going to say make it 62, <laughs> but Shaq couldn't finish. Still a little more than a minute to play in the first half. Pippen left unattended, hits it. Well, that's a little five-point swing there. Can that give Morton a little line? They're looking for any kind of silver line, and they can find right now an unbelievably dominant first half by the Lakers. Not only did Shaq not get the dunk, but they were disjointed coming back defensively because of it. That left Pippen open. So it is a five-point swing. Shaw has an answer. What's happened is when they go in the post to Kobe, they're having the double team. And in the double teams, the Lakers are spacing the floor, they're passing the basketball, and everybody's making three-point shots. Ori, Shaw, Rice, they all have launched on this three-point just. It's going to make the Portland Trailblazers think about what are we going to do with our defensive matchups? You know, standing out there unguarded in practice with someone just tossing you the ball and you're in rhythm, making eight of 11 threes is pretty good. That's what they've made in this game. Stoudemire had it knocked away but recovers. Scotty, he's short with this three. Stoudemire, 14 seconds. They have a foul to give. Trent backing in. 
Finding Stoudemire to the corner for Smith for three. At the buzzer, a small bit of hope, at least an upbeat note on which to end what was otherwise a disastrous second quarter for them. Well, Phil Jackson was given the sign to Brian Shaw, take the foul, take the foul. He didn't, and when they got inside and they had to help, they swung the ball and hit the three. But even with that said, a 21-point lead for the Lakers. A magnificent first half. All of it established in the second quarter. It was tied, believe it or not, at 26 after one, and the Lakers... Rasheed Wallace saddled with foul trouble and then hit with a technical on top of it in the first half. Just about everything went well for Shaquille O'Neal until time had expired at the end of the half when he was hit with a technical. Back with Doug Collins, Bob Costas at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. These teams haven't seen each other in nearly three months. Nobody would have thought, though, that we'd have a halftime score like this. Let's search for the explanation among the keys to this series. Well, we talked about in, in showtime what the keys were going to be for Portland. You said Sabonis has got to stay on the floor 30-plus minutes and hit the outside jump shots. He didn't even attempt a shot. Shaquille, could he stay out of foul trouble? Yes, he has 14 points. Scotty has 12 points. We thought he needed to get 16 or more. Kobe Bryant has 12. Did a nice job on Stoudemire holding him to six. Now remember, Stoudemire led them in scoring in the regular season against the Lakers at 18. And we said they must dominate the power forward matchup with Wallace and Grant. Have they done that? No. Actually, they've been outscored by four. Rice off to a great start. He needs to hit his shot. He does. He has 10 points. Everything is going right uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers. And we talk about Rasheed Wallace. One of the keys in the game was when he picked up his third foul. Robert Ory drove the ball to the basket. As he jumps, the referee says he hits him with his hip. Gets the third foul. Rasheed Wallace says, what did I do? And so the referee told him what he did. Now you bumped him with your hip. And he said, you know, you bumped him with your hip. So he, so he told Mike Dunleavy, he looks like he's a co okay. He goes and he sits down. Now as he's sitting down, there's a stoppage in play, a free throw, and he won't let up. Ron Garrison looks at him and gives him a technical. These are the things that disrupts not only Rasheed Wallace, but his team. If they're going to win this series, he's got to be out on the floor. He's got to be productive. And more importantly, he's got to stay in focus, Bob, with what they want to do. People whose tempers are not in control and whose tempers ultimately do them in, whether in the college ranks, the pro ranks, or another walk of life, almost always believe they're in the right in a given situation. Almost always believe, well, if this hadn't happened, it wouldn't have led to this. But this guy's got a track record. 38 technicals for a season? That's an NBA record. Not the kind you want to achieve, if achievement is the right word. Third quarter coming up. Ahmad Rashad back in Los Angeles with the Lakers lead at 63-42. Now, Mike Dunleavy told his team at halftime that they've got to get to the line. No foul shots. Got to take the ball to the hole. They're going to continue to double Shaq, and obviously they've got to really buck it up on the defense and try to step it up. Phil Jackson told his team, keep the momentum. they got to go out and try to win the third quarter. They also expect Portland to extend the defense, try to maybe press them the entire way, and obviously no letdowns. Bob? Ahmad, thanks. You've been saying that one of the keys to the series, Doug, Portland had to have an edge in three-pointers and an edge at the free-throw line. This is the first free-throw they have shot in the entire game, and it's a technical called on Shaq at the conclusion of the first half. Steve Smith nominated to shoot it. Which makes it a 20-point game. The Lakers did lead at one time by as many as 24. Well, Bobby, if you look at the numbers, the Lakers are plus six at the free throw line. They're plus 12 at the three point line. So plus 19 in a game right now that's a 20 point game. So those are two areas. Another key area, you got to take care of the ball. Eight turnovers for the Blazers led to 15 points, 15 to two points off turnovers. Smith on Rice. Now Shaq returns to face Sabonis. O'Neal's jumper is off and Portland looking to cut into this lead which is now 20 brings it back with their first possession of the second half. Sabonis from Pippen to the left hand and it rolls off. That's his first field goal attempt of the game. Harper got around Pippen gave it up to Green they swing it to Rice for three. Rebound tipped to Wallace. Switches on to Stoudemire. 
He lets a long one go and hits it. It counts for two. He was just inside the line. Into Shaq over Savonis. When he gets it that deep, there's nothing you can do because there's nowhere the defense can get back and help you with the double team, and he'll just go right over the top of Savonis. So great low post position by Shaquille. Juggles and recovers and connects off the glass. That's exactly the way he started the game. Went down on the low block against AC Green. Has him height wise, quickness wise, jumping ability. Took his time and he scored. Kobe with Wallace over on the double team to join Stoudemire and Mike Mathis says, hold on. on Sabonis, his first. Laker ball from the side. With the Lakers in front now by 18. What was a very raucous crowd in the first half is quite subdued as the third quarter begins. Harper around Stoudemire. You see why Phil Jackson loves big guards? That time Harper posts up against Stoudemire. So that is going to be a tough dilemma for Mike Dunleavy in this series. He loves Stoudemire on the floor or Anthony, but both small guards. That's a matchup problem, Bob. Wallace knocked away by Harper. And Hart comes out with a steal. Here's Rice. better than we've seen today. Offhand can't think of any occasion where they've sustained it for this much of a game. Pippen had it stripped away. The ball was kicked. And the whistle blows. Ron Harper is always roaming in that lane. Sabonis, excuse me, uh, Wallace goes up and here comes Harper. He strips the ball. Fast break. Great passing opportunities. And we get Shaquille O'Neal with a dunk with a great pass from Kobe Bryant. Next possession down the floor. Harper again strips a man who looks like he has an easy layup. Portland ball after it was kicked by the Lakers. Stoudemire roams free, and nobody switched onto him. It's almost like Shaquille is saying, I do not want Sabonis to hit a shot. I want to keep him to where he doesn't scratch or start shooting that jump shot to give him any confidence. We'll give Stoudemire some baskets. Kobe misses the jumper over Stoudemire. Shaquille has five assists. Kobe has six to go with their 16 and 12 points, respectively. Pippen for three. The rebound to Glenn Rice. So when your two top scorers have 11 assists between them, and Stoudemire kicked that ball, so the Lakers will keep it. That's one indication of the kind of ball movement you've got. Well, what they've done also, too, is they, they've predicated their offense on they know that Kobe's going to get double teamed, and so is Shaq. So they're getting guys in the right areas to be able to get the ball to the right people. And more importantly, you get those assists when you make shots, and they've been red hot. I shortchanged O'Neal a basket. He's got 18 rather than 16. But a pretty good assist turnover ratio in a 20 assist to two turnovers. Shaq, jumper in the lane. He's got 20 now. And remember, he never scored more than 23 in any of the four regular season meetings with Portland. Well, Mike Dunleavy's going to take a timeout. And right now, Portland is scratching their head because he goes, what can we do in the post? If we put Stoudemire on Harper, they go to him. If we do it to Kobe, they go to him. What? regular season. This is a time in the playoffs where you have time to prepare, to bring out a team's weaknesses, to be able to expose them. That's what the Lakers have done. Now, one of the things that we saw with Portland early in the year, that when Lakers did that, they did not react well to it. They're going to have to now. They're in a series. Pippen to Wallace. Knocked away. Wallace got it back. Scores. Plus a foul. Now, Rasheed Wallace is going to have to be very careful. Ron Garrettson twice now has gone over to Mike Dunleavy and said, look, you better tell him to stay off of us. Here is a little reverse play. And who's over there again? Ron Harper. Now, Wallace with great hustle to get it back. 
the basket and the foul, but you see him look at the official with tremendous emotion. He has got to leave that alone. He already has one technical. I think they've called a delay of game here, so they're giving him every leeway they can to prevent from calling that second technical foul, Bob. They're being very, very fair. And Rasheed Wallace just doesn't seem to get it. In his mind, he's the persecuted party every game. Amazing how he, among all NBA players, seems to be singled out for bad calls such a disproportionate amount of the time, at least from his perspective. Harper missed the three, and little Stoudemire at 5'10 grabs the rebound. dribbling he's done the Lakers just forcing him to burn clock eventually he turns it over Damon Stoudemire has a tendency to do that to over dribble ball kicked again seven ten to play in the third Lakers by 19 Driving on Sabonis. See, Sabonis got there. Just doesn't have the mobility to be able to stop and go up and contest. But you know what? Who does against Shaquille O'Neal? That's why he's the most dominant player in the game today. Pippen, before he could give it up to Wallace, he was fouled on the play. The quickness, the footwork of Shaquille O'Neal. Sabonis is there, the quick stop. Sabonis goes by, the powerful finish. And I think they might have just shown Wallace. It had been building up to this. Rasheed Wallace has been tossed. Listen to Ron Garrettson. He'll explain the reason why. Yep. Time out LA. Whack, get out. He didn't say nothing. Get away from me, Steve. He didn't say get away from me, Steve. Can I talk to he didn't about? say a word. Technical foul, Wallace, he's gone. No, not right. I asked him three times to stop staring at me to try to intimidate me. I'm done. He's gone. I asked him, I told him. I have already told Mike twice before to have him stop staring to try to intimidate me. He did it again, he's gone. Well, Doug, can you get tossed for looking at a guy funny? Well, I, I think what's happened, but we talked about it the last three minutes of the game that Rasheed Wallace is going to have to stay away from the referees. And I think you said when you have that kind of technicals against you this season and that occurs, you have a reputation. And, and Rasheed has to understand that. And uh, they kept saying, stop, stop, stop. Eventually, they, they said, that's it. Now, did he say anything? No. Normally, do you get thrown out for staring? No. But when Rashid has gone through all this and he's trying to intimidate the officials, they stopped it. And this is going to be critical to this series. Bob, we've talked about it. Rashid Wallace, can he do it? I don't know. But that's the major question. Portland cannot win without it. He locked 16 minutes, shot 5 of 8, 11 points, 3 rebounds, and now has been tossed. And see what it does? It dispirits your team. They, they need you. did not beat the shot clock 24 second violation if you're the Blazers do you even look at the tape of this game maybe the coaches do do you show it to your team oh you have to because every game you have to make adjustments and the team that loses is the team that has to make the adjustments they're the team that says where do we where do we get beat what can we do to be better Kobe Bryant trying to explode to the hoop and the whistle is blown and you know what? It gets ugly. But during the playoffs, tape watching, I think, is even more important than, than uh, regular season because you've got this team could be as many as seven times in two weeks. No foul. Just ball out of bounds. Quickly into Rice, who misses. Pippen pulls up, and Kobe blocks his three-pointer into the hands of A.C. Green. Pippen tried to set up. Contact with Rice. No call, and Rice drives the lane and scores. He looked like Magic Johnson on that one. Took the ball, avoided the charge, took the ball behind his back, 
Now remember, he started the game off with an end-to-end -end rush for a layup. That started his day. Rice has 13, averaging 14 in the playoffs. Brian Grant pushed by A.C. Green. And the obvious Laker foul. And see, Bob, another thing talking about the playoffs. Portland is here. You got this game Saturday. They play again Monday. So you wake up tomorrow, you got the papers. Then you got the papers on Monday. You're going to hear all the conversation. Phil Jackson's going to give his little spin. You're going to have Mike Dunleavy. You're going to have all that stuff in the paper. And from Portland's standpoint, they cannot let that get to them. They have got to stay focused. Now, when you say stay focused, obviously they've lost that today. But if they're going to win, they are not going to beat a Laker team by playing on the edge and losing their cool. Because of his injured knee and because some of his minutes went to newcomers, Brian Grant had his lowest averages in points and rebounds this season of his entire career. But he has played better as the playoffs have progressed. Here's Bonzi Wells in guarding Harper. Now Portland's gone to a big backcourt now with Bonzi Wells, Pippen, and Steve Smith. See if that'll work for them. Shaq jump hook over Sabonis. That's a tough shot. You just got to pat him and say, that's why you're the MVP. I made you take a tough shot, and you were just a little better that time. He's more than a little bit better <laughs> than almost everybody he plays against. Grant got it. Knocked away as he cut through the lane. Good enough, speaking of Shaq, to now, in the opinion of most, belong somewhere in the discussion when the conversation turns to the greatest centers who have ever played. Well, you know what? He's, he's continuing to grow up every single day, and, and, and I think he's made the, the statement over and over that right now winning a championship is the most important thing in his life. So Jonas missed the hook. Loose ball foul is called, and it's against Portland. Brian Grant's third. by 24 and that lead just jumped it went from 26 all to boom it was about a 22 run and Portland has not been able to recover Kobe working on Pippen and he traveled now, now Kobe's got to be very careful because Ahmad talked about this before everybody wants to see Kobe and Scotty but Kobe's got to be very careful not to make this too personal to show Scotty how good he is right now. That's not what's needed. Steve Smith for three. A tough one, too. A little bit off balance. Generally, Kobe has had good games against Scotty Pippen. Well, especially in Houston last year in the playoffs, Scotty had one good game, 37. The other three averaged only 12. Kobe clearly won that matchup last year. in attendance. We might as well call the role of celebs on hand. Dustin Hoffman. Magic Johnson. Ray Liotta. Denzel Washington. He likes Dustin Hoffman frequently in attendance. Will Smith. And of course, Jack Nicholson courtside. For a guy who has the best seat in the house, he relies on the binoculars a lot. He told me that was to get a closer view of you, Bob. Well, <laughs> understandable in that case. Here's Rice. Working in the lane and connecting off the glass. Rice opening this series in fine fashion. Well, again, there's that low post game that we saw so much of of Glenn Rice in Charlotte. It looks to me like Phil is making a conscious effort to get him involved in every possible way he can. No place for the faint of heart inside Shaquille O'Neal and Sabonis. Now again, Sabonis is no little man, and Shaq just rocked him on his heels. Bonzi Wells misses. And Ari has it. Growing up in Lithuania, how many people do you think Arvidas Sabonis encountered who could shove him around? <laughs> Guarded by Wells, and that draws a whistle. 
And it will be on Fonzie, whose given name is Guan D'Angelo Wells. He got the nickname Bonzi because his mom ate bonbons all the time while she was pregnant with him. Shaq was fouled. The ball spins out. It could have been a three-point play. Is this going to be Shaq's first free throw of the game? I don't remember shooting a free throw. Yep, it is. talk about Hack of Shaq, and they've done such a great job. The Lakers moving the basketball. This is going to be his first free throw attempt. The Lakers up 80-57, and we've played nine minutes, basically, into the third period. Now, Sabonis has played about 32 minutes in this game. It's a lost cause for the Blazers. The next game is a fairly quick turnaround Monday night. Should Dunleavy be thinking about getting him out of here and saving him some minutes? That's a very good point, and I think that Mike Dunleavy's got a couple things he's got to think about. Is it important to try to get Arvidas in the swing of things here, or is it more important to have fresh legs going into that game on Monday? I think you'd see in the last 322 here, Bob, if they don't make a little bit of a run, maybe Sabonis might sit out the entire fourth quarter, but that's a very good point. Here is Sabonis. A little leaning jumper that's no good, and the follow is there for Bonzi Wells. But what they're doing, what the Lakers are doing against the bonus, Shaq is not coming out of the paint to defend his against his shot. What he's doing, he's staying back, and they're running Robert Corey out at him. Or he misses on the run. Pippen pushes it up the floor, gives it to Wells, and Wells was fouled. Tomorrow, more NBA on NBC playoff action. It'll start at 2.30 Eastern time with a special one-hour edition of NBA Showtime. Then, game seven between the Heat and the Knicks, and somebody's got to win and somebody's got to go home, although you get the feeling if they played a best out of 25, it'd be 22-22 going to the 25th game. Halftime NBA draft lottery. Game two of this series is here at the Staples Center Monday. It's on TNT 9 Eastern Time. And that will be a must game for the Blazers. I don't think there's any way that they think they can go 2 -oh, down 2-0 -oh in this series and then win four of the next five, Bob. Before anybody at MIT gets upset, yeah, I blew the math. I meant it would be 12-12 going into game 25. It's all hypothetical. It's a best of seven series. I'm sorry I brought the whole subject up. Here's Pippen. The other O'Neal makes his first appearance. That's Jermaine O'Neal. And he was fouled by his namesake. Bob, this is what I'm talking about. Now, watch where Shaq is and watch where Arvidas is. Shaq helps out. The ball swings. And they're running either Kobe or Ori at him on the perimeter. So they're allowing Shaq to stay back in there help on the screen roll, then run a perimeter guy at Sabonis, take him off any kind of catch and shoot, make him dribble it, and they think then his percentage will go down. So you can see strategy of the Lakers of how they're keeping Shaq back in the paint and taking Sabonis away from his outside jump shot. That's what series preparation is all about when you have three days to get ready to play a team. First two points for Jermaine O'Neal. Out of the double to Shaw for three. Shaw's hitting three. Ori's hitting three. Rice is hitting three. Fox is hitting three. They're all in line today. Steve Smith. Rebound Jermaine O'Neal. Around the perimeter to Pippen for a three-pointer of his own. It's held up. Grant, though, gives them a fresh 24. Scotty doesn't use much of it. Hits his second chance three. Well, at the Carnival, he's to say three for a dollar, so Scotty got it down on the second one there. But you see Jermaine O'Neal in the game, and he's quick off his feet. And remember now, the first game of the year between these two teams, he frustrated Shaq with a hard foul, and Shaq responded and got ejected. Wells with the steal and the jam, although Shaw thought he was fouled. Now, the Lakers don't want to let up here because right now Portland's extending their defense exactly what Phil Jackson said to Ahmad at halftime. Oh, it's now a 16-point game. A little more than a minute to play in the third. Bryant misses it. 
saved in, and here comes Portland on an 11 3 run at this point. Again, as he comes out of the backcourt, Kobe fouled by Bonzi Wells. Basket doesn't count. How about the shot? Now it doesn't count, but how about the shot that Kobe just made at the end of that play? That was an incredible shot. You know, someone puts that on you in a backyard game, of course, you just concede the H and move on to O. Now, watch this, Bobby. He's going to get the foul, and he just finishes it up. And look at this shot, the wraparound. That sort of shades of Julius Irving driving against the Lakers in the playoffs the one year. We took it underneath the basket and wrapped it around. Kobe misses the first, and Portland asks for time. Just under 33 seconds to play in the third, and they're making a... ...of the 21-year-old Kobe Bryant, who is... Just recognizing what he needs to do out on the floor. See him go to the open area and finds his teammate Shaquille O'Neal for the powerful finish. Takes his time here, sees the double team coming, goes away from it, lays it in the basket. Defensively, you're going to see him here against Scottie Pippen, chases him into a tough shot turnover that is knocked away, and they go on a fast break. And then here he is in transition with the shot block. So Kobe Bryant doing everything that his team needs him to do on both ends of the floor. And, Bob, we talked about it in the open. He's going to have to be able to guard Stoudemire, Pippen, Bonzi Wells, Steve Smith. He's doing that more importantly, not forcing his offense, playing a very solid game today. Neal on the bench for the moment. Kobe hits the second of two, making the lead 17. Mike Mathis spots a foul. It'll be on Kobe. It'll be his fourth. Kobe Bryant announced his engagement this week to an 18 year old senior at Marina High School in Huntington Beach named Vanessa Lane. Much of the town abuzz over that development. Memorial Day weekend, all the action and excitement of the WNBA returns to NBC. And what a way to kick things off as Teresa Weatherspoon and the Liberty face Cynthia Cooper and the three-time defending champion Comets in a rematch of last year's championship series. The WNBA on NBC, Monday, May 29th. Phil Jackson asked Kobe Bryant if he wasn't a bit too young to be getting married. And Kobe's reply was, man, I do everything young. <laughs> He's just 21 and already one of the five or six best players in the league. So in that sense, he's correct. Fifteen seconds to play in the quarter. And Harper lost it as the defense converged on him near midcourt. Detlef Schrempf, five seconds. Off-balance shot is an air ball. O'Neal follows it and beats the buzzer by two-tenths of a second. He's giving him great energy off the bench, Jermaine O'Neal. This is a young guy, 6 feet 11. He's got quickness off the floor. Now, he doesn't have the muscle to play against Shaq. Gotten on the offensive boards, and quietly, the Blazers have crept, crept back to within 13. And now the difference is a bit more respectable as we start the final 12 minutes of regulation. They trail by 13. Derek Fisher guarding Greg Anthony. Fox is on Pippen. Barnsley Wells with Shaw up on him. Spins around him, and he was fouled. It's an after the play there, Barnsley Wells, after he goes up and he gets fouled, he goes over. And gives a bump, I think, to Brian Shaw or whatever. Very fortunate that the referees did not call a technical. Those are the little things that you got to leave alone, especially early in the series. And, you know, Brian Shaw is talking to, to Bob Delaney about it. But Bonzi Wells, a terrific low-post player. 
Uh, Bob, and remember we were in here in January. The one thing that Phil Jackson had talked about is he was very concerned about Bonzi Wells' ability in that low post. Felt like he was a wild card, so he's very aware of what he can do in that low block. Restraint is a virtue less and less seen in sports these days. Sometimes it helps. 12 point differential. Rick Fox can't knock it back up to 15. Wells claims it. Here come the Blazers. Jermaine O'Neal couldn't finish. Got bumped just enough to be able to where he couldn't finish that shot. Shaq got in deep, and the other O'Neal had to foul him. Well, this is where the Blazers have to use their fouls, especially in this fourth quarter. We talked about the importance of Shaquille being able to make fourth quarter free throws. And when you have this kind of lead at 12 points, it's not that vital. But when you get into a close game, it's going to be very, very important. Fox up top to Shaw. Six on the shot clock. It'll be Ori. Way off. It bounces to Shrimp, who gives it up to Pippen. Spinning on Shaq for the jumper, which Shaq got a piece of. Perhaps not the best shot selection in this situation. And at the other end, he returns the favor. Fisher has it, and a foul. He's a tremendous shot blocker, very quick off his feet, and if he can get some distance where Shaq can't power into him, he'll be able to do that. He actually goes up and then comes back down and goes up and blocks the shot. That's the quickness we talk about off the floor. Bobby talked about the shot selection. He's got to turn and face Shaq. Shaq too powerful to play with his back to the back. Shaq with a nice assist on the box dunk. Somebody else got a technical here. I don't know who it is. It might have been Fox. Now remember, Rick Fox in game four in Phoenix came in against Phoenix, was very frustrated, got a couple fouls against Cliff Robinson out of frustration, and that blowout was thrown out of the game. So here's a quick technical now by Rick Fox. Shrimp will shoot it. Let's see what warranted the technical foul, the strong, powerful dunk. I guess they, threw, they said that he threw Jermaine O'Neal back for Bonzi Wells. I, that's, uh, you know, it looked like that contact was mutual. I agree with that. That, to me, is one of those play on. Greg Anthony. Fisher goes sprawling. Bonzi Wells, nice move. Seeing more energy to this group now that uh, Portland has on the floor. And you've seen a little relaxation by the Lakers. Still too much time to go to do that. This is an 11-point game. In deep to O'Neal, who scores, plus the foul. The Trailblazers, who were down 24, had more than cut that lead in half, got it back down to 11. But now it's 13, and Shaq will have a chance to tack another one on. How discouraging. You try to reach up and grab him, you can't. He powers through two people. Three-point play opportunity when we come back. why Rashid Wallace isn't in the game and for that matter isn't even on the bench for Portland. This is what led to his being ejected for the seventh time this year. This is in the first half. He bumps Robert Ory who gets a three-point play out of it. He disputes the foul. Garrett's and the referee says you bumped him with your hip. Now Wallace pantomimes what he thinks he might have done. Disgusted. And now, while not in the game, he gets the technical for con continuing the conversation with Ron Garrison. Now a bit later, after several warnings, not only to Wallace, but to his coach, Mike Dunleavy, from Garrison, here's what happens next. Yep. Time out of L.A. Whack! Get out! Get away from me, Steve. Get away from me, Steve. He didn't say a word. Technical foul 
Bill Wallace, he's gone. No, not right. I asked him three times to stop staring at me to try to intimidate me. I'm done. He's gone. I asked him, I told him. give my I have already told Mike twice before to have him stop staring to try to intimidate me. He did it again, he's gone. So that's why Wallace is out of there. O'Neal to the line, can't complete a three-point play. The Blazers trail by 13. And as you see, Portland, whether it's coincidence or not, they did get some fresh people in off the bench that might have brought some energy to it. Not just because Wallace was out, but because the deficit was so large, Dunleavy figured I might as well try, might as well try something different, and they've been a plus eight since. Well, I think that's what you talk about in a series. You got to start figuring out what matchups will work, who's playing well, who can we go to, and what they've done is they've gone to Bonzi Wells in the post, and you can see he's delivering. That time Shaq comes over and knocks the ball loose, but it was a good move. Here's Brian Shaw, who a moment ago committed his fourth foul, which is why Portland had the ball out of bounds. Now the Lakers with it. And Shaw pumps up a three. The rebound out of bounds, and it will go to Portland. Again, still plenty of time. You've got nine minutes and 17 seconds. You're down 13 points. The big thing is your defense is starting to lock in a little bit and get some stops. Now your offensive efficiency has to continue to come up. way short but there was some contact and a foul and that'll be five on Shaw Kobe Bryant walks back in the game badly he looked at Phil Jackson Phil saw him and here comes Kobe so Kobe's going to come in probably the reason he's coming in even though he has four fouls is to play against Bonzi Wells try to calm him down a little bit no no uh, Kobe a first team all league defender this year Bonzi Wells, second-year player out of Ball State, makes the first. Steve Smith in, now Scotty Pippen out. Scotty's done a good job today. When he's been out there, his team has played well. When Mike Dunleavy substituted for him in that second quarter, that's when they really lost the momentum and sort of came unraveled. Bonzi Wells has played 12 minutes. He now has 11 points. And it's an 11-point Laker lead. with Wells on it. Six on the shot clock. Shaq looking for Ori. Ball knocked away. Four seconds to shoot now for the Lakers. Talking about Shaq underneath the basket. But they, they do not want it to lob right to him, but the problem he has if they lob it to him, Fox stepping right then out of bounds will be open. So be aware of Rick Fox here stepping right back in bounds or Ori for a three out of the corner. They may be adjusting the clock here. Had a couple seconds off the clock during that last free throw. The question is, if some time came off the clock while Bonzi okay, Wells was shooting free throws, and of course that should never happen. So it's more game clock here than shot clock we're worried about. Out of bounds. Same, same thing, they let a couple seconds go off. Four's on the 24, 8.38 on the big clock. So they, they lost five seconds, Bob, on the, on the game clock. The shot clock will say the same. So they put five seconds back on. Watch at the top, above the 24, whether that moves. Yeah, it's moving. Well, Bonzi Wells is shooting a free throw. Went from 58 to 57, then 56. So they figure they lost five seconds, which they now tack back on. 8.38 on the clock now. The lob into O'Neal, who gets rid of it quickly. Winds up in Harper's hands. For the easy lay-in. But see, Bob, I said that was going to happen because they double-teamed Shaq. So what he did, he caught the ball. Harper stepped right in for the layup. That's a set play when you try to prevent Shaq from catching and shooting against that clock. And a whistle at the other end. If it's Brian, it's his fifth, and it is. With 
the five fouls. Bryant out. Fisher back in. Jermaine O'Neal goes out for Portland, and Brian Grant replaces him. Now they'll put Rick Fox over on Bonzi Wells now. So remember, Rick Fox loves to strip that ball as the guy tries to take it off. The lob intended for Wells doesn't come off. And the ball went out of bounds, touched last by Portland. Shaquille O'Neal has 27 points in this game, eight assists, and a surprisingly low number of rebounds, six. Harper. Out to Fox. Shot clock at eight. Here's Ori out of the corner for three, and it's short. The rebound is taken by Brian Grant. Portland down by 13. Detlef Schrempf cuts it to 11. Portland's had a lot of opportunities here. They've been able to, to count in when they've been able to stop them. They get into some early offense. That's what they need to do. The Lakers hit 8 of 11 on threes in the first half. They're one for their last eight from beyond the arc in this half. Fisher got around Grant and got the roll. Two critical baskets, one by Fisher, one by Harper to try to stem this tide. Greg Anthony out top to Wells for three. Wow, you see a little bit of this kid's game. You've seen him in the post now out on the perimeter. You can see why the Portland coaches really love his game. He's got 14, and they're within 10. Just under seven minutes. Harper. And the foul will be on the Lakers. The charge on Ron Harper. You try to get back with the long perimeter shooting. First of all, Detlef Shrimp off the broken play. Nobody covers him. He knocks it down. And then Greg Anthony, great penetration. And he finds Bonzi Wells on the opposite side of the court with a diagonal pass. He buries the three. It's a 10-point game. A lot of time left to go as Portland is gaining some momentum. In a sense, it's been a roller coaster season for Mike Dunleavy's Portland Trail Blazers. They had that 45 and 11 record before the February 29th loss to the Lakers. Then they were knocked out of their groove for a while, barely over 500 the rest of the season. Got it back together in the playoffs, impressive against the Timberwolves and then the Jazz. In this game, game one of the conference finals, tied after one, nearly run out of the building in the second quarter, riding themselves in the third, small edge here in the fourth. What was a 24-point deficit is now down to 10. Plenty of time left, almost seven minutes. And what they found is Bonzi Wells right now is, is a tough problem for the Lakers. They'll probably go right back to him once again. Or Steve Smith for three, which could have cut it to seven. Good set play there. Smith had a good look at it. That would have been a big hoop. Shaq in the lane. back into something and Shaq make it look so easy so big so strong he has 29 just about his average for the regular season and the playoffs Bonzi Wells forced to the baseline here's Detlef Shrimp through the lane to the left hand tough shot couldn't finish it tries it again ball still loose batted outside Fisher outruns Anthony, who grabs him by the seat of his pants to hold him up. An almost, almost deep hands slapstick style. Well, that's a good play that time by uh, Greg Anthony, prevent the layup. This is great hustle by Derek Fisher, the loose ball. And he just beats Anthony to it by about a half step. He's got a clear path to the basket here. So rather than give up the layup, Anthony grabs him, then holds him up. So it'll be a two-shot foul here because of a clear path to the basket foul. Detlef Schrempf, meanwhile, very upset. Thought he was hammered trying to follow his own miss earlier. Tonight on NBC, the John Grisham classic, The Rainmaker, comes to NBC, starring Matt Damon, Danny DeVito, Claire Danes, and John Boyd. The network television premiere of The Rainmaker at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, tonight on NBC. It's a good foul. You, you save a point there by doing that. You're still right in the game at 13, still almost six minutes to go. Steve Smith. 
out to Bonzi Wells. Smith, big height advantage on Derek Fisher. Illegal defense call. Well, Shaquille O'Neal right underneath the basket. The first post up play, he started to come over and double team. He started to go back across the lane. They reposted him, and then he just stood underneath the basket. Now, watch Shaquille O'Neal. He comes over to double team, then he starts to go back, and he stays right underneath the basket. His man is lifted up all the way up to the three point line. So that is the second illegal defense. Technical foul. Steve Smith will shoot the free throw, then they'll get possession of the ball with a new clock. Another chance with a basket here to get within 10 or 9 if it's a 3. Marcy Wells, 6 on the 24 as he backs in. That one's short. The rebound to Shaq. And reaching in to grab him is Pippen. Has the hack of Shaq begun? 5.27 to go. That's a 15 foul, so they're over the limit, so Shaq will be shooting two free throws. Now, remember, when we were in here January 22nd, 12 seconds to go in the game, Bob, Kobe Bryant had fouled out, Lakers down two. Phil Jackson took Shaquille O'Neal out of the game because of his poor free throw shooting. Derek Fisher missed a jumper. Portland won that game. Here's where we talked about the critical fourth quarter free throws. And the first one is there for him. Kobe coming back, playing now with five fouls. It was after that game where something really clicked with Shaq. Wait a second. I'm not going to be on the floor when crucial games are decided if I don't improve my free throw shooting. And he did improve it dramatically from that point to the end of the regular season. But he's dipped beneath 50% again so far in the playoffs. 527 left. And again, a 13-point Laker lead. That was the voice of Mike Dunleavy. Keep the pressure on him. We'll crack him. Well, they trail by 13, but they were down by 24 at one point. For the sake of argument, if Portland doesn't come back and win the game, does it still mean something that they make the final more respectable? Sure it does, because what, what they've done is they've found out that Bonzi Wells could be an important piece you know, in this series. Now, in the first series against Minnesota, he didn't play a whole lot. Actually, two DNPs the last two games. Did not play that much against Utah. This could be a series. He could be one of the deciding factors. So that's why, as a coach, you keep looking for things that are going to work. It's, it's a four games that you have to win, not just one. One out of two for Shaq on that trip to the line. He has 30 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Portland's Arvidas Sabonis. Steve Smith deals it back outside to Pippen. His jumper is good. Sabonis has played 32 minutes, hasn't scored, has two assists and no rebounds. Zeros in points and rebounds for Sabonis. Looks like Brian Grant has fouled Shaquille O'Neal off the basketball, so it'll be interesting to see Phil Jackson's reaction to all this. I remember Don Nelson did this uh, in Dallas to Shaquille O'Neal one time. Shaq uh, took umbrage to it, but again, when you're that big and that dominant, and the rules state you can foul to get back in the game and you have to make free, th free throws, well, that's what you got to do. It's not fair that he's bigger and stronger than everybody inside either. Interesting approach by Dunleavy. And Shaq obliges by missing the first. Now, just keep your eye on Brian Grant here on the right corner of our screen. The minute Shaq gets across half court, he wraps over and he grabs him. So, again, fourth quarter, free throw shooting. Shaq is two for six. Now two for seven, but the rebound goes off Shrimp's hands, but as that happens, Robert Ory pushed him for the Laker foul. Why do you keep playing the game, Bob? If this was a 20-point game, those free throws wouldn't mean anything. Now as the game starts to get close, now you put the pressure on. If Shaq struggles at the line, this could affect him the whole series. This is how you get guys in situations where they start losing confidence. That's why you want to keep the game close and give yourself a chance. Remember how, at one point in his career, Will Chamberlain was literally seen running away from defenders who were trying to foul him off the ball. Well, Wilt used to go to guys, if you foul me, I'll hurt you, so don't touch me. 
<laughs> so then you're begging with him as you're fouling him to not hurt you. And just as Wilt could, Shaq could hurt you if he chose to do so. Well, you can see what he's done. Season, free throw attempts, first round. What he's done percentage-wise, second round, a little bit better. But again, that, that will be something we have to keep our eye on. We've got five minutes to go. It's now a nine-point lead. As close as they've been in quite a while. This time, it's Harper. I think they've called a foul on Steve Smith against Shaquille O'Neal off the ball. I don't think that's against Harper. You're right. You're right. As Harper was handling the ball, they fouled Shaq away from it. Here's Steve Smith. Now they wait till they get the ball across half court. There he is. Look at him. That's the easiest foul Shaq has ever had committed against him. Yet it could cause the most pain. He's looking at the official, Smith is, as he's committing the foul, saying, look at me, look at me. Here you go, right here. Shaq is now one for six in the fourth quarter at the line. Now what do you do if you're Phil Jackson? He's your most dominant player. Do you leave him in? Obviously, you want him on the floor, but if Portland continues to score, this will be very interesting. He doesn't get the roll, and he comes up empty. Portland trailing by only nine. Bonzi Wells backing in, and a whistle as he releases it. And this one will go against Portland. Five second back down count. That's the new rule you got in with backing down off the dribble. The minute you start, the count is on. And that was the five second count. Here's another foul, Steve Smith against uh, Shaquille O'Neal. The previous thing designed to eliminate or reduce that Charles Barkley thing, Correct. just pounding the ball into the floor, or Mark Jackson Absolutely. in the post against a smaller guard. And most of the players have gotten the message, so we haven't seen that that often this year. It cost Bonzi Wells a hoop. Meanwhile, though, whether or not Portland comes back to win this game, they are playing with Shaquille O'Neal's head and maybe with Phil Jackson's strategy in subsequent games should they be closer than this one has been most of the way. He is rattled. Well, and, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, the Laker fans are upset. But Mike Dunleavy is playing within the rules right now. It's not like he's made up some rule along the way. He's playing within the scheme of the rules that's written in the NBA rule book. He's missed six in a row. And finally hits one. It's a 10-point game. The fans try to give him some encouragement by coming to their feet, many of them, after he hit that one. Now you know what's going to be talked about between games one and two, Bob. There's always something. Scotty for three. Harper grabs the rebound. Della Tripper tell him to foul him right now. Steve Smith from the backcourt was pointing towards Shrimp, saying, foul him, foul him. That's three on Shrimp. Nobody on the floor besides Grant has as many as four. Grant has four. Well, the thing about this is this strategy is only going to get you back in the game if you start making some shots. Portland has got to make some shots. This gamesmanship, though, is fascinating. Again, the, the Laker fans are very upset, and you know what? This might not be pretty. But Mike Dunley, he's trying to win the game, not friends. And also to influence the rest of the series. And now he's made two straight. Have you ever heard a bigger war over a made free throw? and a Laker foul. That'll be five on Hart. So now Bonzi Wells, who has scored 14, will shoot two with 4-10 on the clock. <laughs> How apropos that Bonzi Wells walks up and misses a free throw after Shaq makes three in a row. 
as Marv Albert would say, not what Mike Dunleavy had in mind. <laughs> he makes one of two. Bob, this, this game might not end at this rate. Here it is again. Scotty Pippen against that. This is taking Hackershack to an extreme. I don't know if I've ever seen it against Shaquille O'Neal, Bob. How many games have we done this year? We never, ever saw this. Oh, no, not to this extent. No. This is a game, regardless of its ultimate outcome, that will be talked about for a long time. He's now made four straight. There's the most recent foul. Now, the interesting thing about this, Bob, I guarantee you, at the Rules Committee meeting, when the people get together, they will talk about this. Because it is within the framework of things if he makes five in a row, but I don't think that they want the game to be played this way. So Mike Dunleavy's not breaking any rules, but I think you're going to see this game talked about for a long time. You're right about that. Steve Smith tries the hook and misses. Shaq grabs the rebound, and they immediately foul him. When he missed his sixth straight, I offered the thought that he appeared rattled. Apparently, I was wrong. Well, you know what? I think what you're seeing in Shaquille O'Neal, this guy has got a lot of pride, and he's a winner. And he was embarrassed. And he got himself together, and he's made five in a row. And hats off to Shaquille O'Neal for stepping up there and doing what he's done. It's another reason why he's the MVP. After missing six straight, he has now made six straight. Now he's begging him to foul him. He's saying, hey, want to foul me? Might as well foul Rick Barry, buddy. <laughs> How about this? A little unexpected drama late in the fourth of the state. why Mike Dunleavy started this hack -a shack strategy so early in the fourth quarter. And now Shaq has made six in a row. Look at him glaring over at Dunleavy. Dunleavy knows that pretty soon the situation is going to change. Bob, in the last two minutes, they have what they call an away from the belt ball foul. And if that were to occur, anybody on the Lakers can shoot the free throw so they can put their best free throw shooter at the line. Then they get the ball sideline out of, by, on, out of bounds. So that's where it becomes very penal, where you could put Glenn Rice, Kobe, one of the best free throw shooters, get the free throw and then get the ball back. So that's why Mike started this early, hoping it could get him back into the game. Shaq has foiled that by making his last six. So 3.53 remaining now. And the circumstances change once we move inside two minutes. Seven in a row, and with that free throw, he breaks the record previously held by Michael Jordan for most free throw attempts in a single period of a playoff game. Shaq has hit eight of 15 in this fourth quarter. And the call goes against Portland, an offensive foul. Through the first three quarters of this game, Shaq had shot two free throws and made one. He shot 15 in the fourth. And now they're taking Shaq out of the game. He has more than made his point. Jackson is aware that the rule will change inside two minutes. But more importantly, Shaquille O'Neal has laughed last very, against Dunleavy. Very good point as we see Bonzi Wells the seal. But I think what Phil has done here, the reason Shaq is out now is he wants him to finish on a high note, making his last seven in a row. That's a high for Shaq going into game two. Very good move here by Phil Jackson. Although the game is not over yet, I think he wants him to finish up on a very positive note. It's a 13-point lead. Piper in traffic. Can't increase it. Pippen's got it. Just over three minutes left. Pippen wanted to pull up for three. Rice got in his face. Brian Grant was fouled. Perhaps by Travis Knight just into the game. And it was his first. Curious substitution now as we see Shaq there. It's the things you talked about. Two of ten start since seven of seven. But Damon Stoudemire is coming into the game for Bonzi Wells. But more importantly, 
Sabonis is coming back into the game. Now, without Shaq in the game, does that mean they're going to try to post Sabonis against Travis Knight? Maybe. Oh, here comes Shaq back in the game. So Phil said, okay, Sabonis is back in, and I'm bringing Shaq. I'm not going to let Sabonis get going in this game because Sabonis, I don't think, has a field goal. See, you're always coaching for the next game in the playoffs, always thinking ahead. You're right about Sabonis. Doesn't have a field goal or a free throw. He's been blanked. Shrimp on the offensive glass. Rejected by Shaq. They're going to foul Shaq again. Scotty Pippen runs across the floor and gets him one more time. Shaquille O'Neal comes in and immediately makes his presence felt with the rejection of Detlef Shrimp. And then he looks at him and nothing knows about it. Here comes Scotty Pippen running across the floor. Little tag, you're it. Shoot two free throws. Several minutes of playing time ago, Mike Dunleavy alerted Ron Garrison to this strategy during the timeout. And Garrison told his partners, Mathis and Delaney, to be alert for it. Well, that one was short arm. And his first miss after making his last seven in a row prior to that. So Dunleavy alerted the officials, and they were aware of it so that they didn't really have to mug Shaq but barely touch him to get a whistle. Well what's that, what's going to happen now is Shaq misses the second one is that the Portland's going to have to look to score quickly because in 50 seconds that away from the ball rule goes into effect and, and Mike Dunley is not going to be able to do that anymore. Sabonis so thought about a three gives it to Stoudemire and he's off with it. Shaq picks it up and Pippen grabs him again. I can only think about what Phil Jackson is going to talk about in his press conference. Remember at game four against Phoenix when they got spanked on the road, the little timeout at the end, the little distraction to, to take away from how badly his team got beat to where they talked about the timeouts. I can only imagine the spin that's going to go on this. A little smile on Jackson's face as he leans over to talk with his longtime assistant Tex Winter. Another miss. Let's listen in on the officials from earlier. I asked Mike because I said it would help us. They're going to start taking fouls on Shaquille virtually every time he touches it. So let's be aware of that. That's the conversation we were talking about a moment ago. Made seven in a row, missed three in a row. Now hit that one. for three. Way off. Shrimp was trying to save it and couldn't. What an interesting game one. All the things that have gone on here today, I don't think anybody would have thought that the score would be 105 by the Lakers. A very uh, low-scoring series all four games in the regular season, but today, the Lakers shooting, their, their ability to not turn the ball over, uh, has, has really been the difference in this game. Now it's Sabonis who just walks over and grabs Shaq right in front of Mike Mathis. So Dunleavy is sticking with his strategy to the bitter end, which will come 20 seconds from now, and the clock moves inside two minutes. There's Sabonis once again off the ball, fouling Shaquille, and Mike Mathis makes the call. Shaquille once again steps to the free throw line. 38 points. Don't forget game seven tomorrow. Nixon Heat from Miami, preceded by a special one hour edition of Showtime at 2.30 Eastern. NBA draft lottery at halftime. And now Shaq for his second try. Got it. Bob, this opens up a lot of questions. What if, let's say Portland in game two may be even winning in the fourth quarter. Did they employ the same strategy starting early in the fourth quarter to try to do the same thing? I mean, it's because we haven't seen anybody do this all year long. This opens up a whole different kind of hack-a-shack that I've ever seen. 
Stoudemire missed. And Sabonis grabbed Shaq almost exactly as the clock went to two minutes. But they may say it happened at 2 one We'll see. No, he, I read Ronnie Garrison's left. He said that's the way from the ball foul. Can shoot one shot, the anybody ball. can shoot it, and they get it back. So that strategy is now done. Phil Jackson is just enough of a game player. He's going to let Rice shoot it. It ran through my mind. But with a 14-point lead, maybe he'd let Shaq shoot it. <laughs> now, just despite Dunleavy. Again, the rule is anybody on the floor for the Lakers can shoot the free throw. Mike Mathis says, hold on, before Rice attempts the shot. Now, Rice missed it. Shaq said, I can do that. Let me shoot it. <laughs> There's two on the clock. The question is, is it at two or, or inside two? two? Or inside two. That's what they're discussing right now. And to be truthful, it looked to me like the whistle blew when it was 2.01. Since we have... So they've reversed themselves. And they do put Shaq on the line for two. Remember in 1991, Mike Dunleavy took the Lakers to the NBA Finals against Phil Jackson when Phil won their first championship. So these guys have met before. Shaq needs this next one for an even 40 points. Kakashak strategy has been employed with mixed results by Mike Dunleavy. 40. Well, all we have to figure out here is we've got to find out when they started and what the score was, the margin, what it is now. Because that will let you know exactly whether they're able to cut into it at all. Sabonis. Still without a basket. Whistle on the rebound. It's on Robert Ory. I'm a little surprised that uh, Mike Dunleavy still has Sabonis on the floor, even a Scotty Pippen right now. The game is, is over. It's a 15-point game, minute 45 to go. And you need, you need Scotty on the floor, obviously, for game two, and you also need Sabonis out there with some fresh legs. And, and he didn't get a field goal today, as you talked about. I'm a little bit surprised those two guys are still out there. NBA Inside Stuff. Ahmad Rashad visits with the Trailblazers Scotty Pippen, a six-time NBA champion with the Bulls. Pippen talks about the challenges that lie ahead in order to win another ring. Inside Stuff next Saturday on NBC. Check local listings for air times. And Sabonis indeed goes out with 145 remaining. It's Harper who's fouled by Stoudemire in the backcourt. And what's going to be interesting to me is to hear what not only Mike Dunleavy has to say, but more interestingly, what the Portland Trailblazer players have to say. Because you know the media is going to go to them and ask them, what do you think about the hack -a shack and what went on and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see what the conversation is coming out of that locker room. Well, the appropriate answer from the players is we have faith in our coach, Mike Dudley. He's gotten us to this point. It's his job to decide the strategy, our job to carry it out. Now, that's the appropriate thing to say. The question is, what will be said? <laughs> as you know, as both former player and coach, it doesn't always go according to plan. Correct. And it's when somebody asks you the question and how you feel when that question's being asked. A lot of things go into that equation. Don't we all know that? <laughs> Here's Stoudemire out of the backcourt. They threw it away. With a minute and a half remaining, and the Lakers up by 14. The Lakers have done a really nice job against Damon Stoudemire today. They, they, anytime he's gotten in the lane, just the presence of the shot blocker really has forced him to try to kick that ball out of there. Got off to a decent start, but since then really has struggled. Glenn Rice had it poked away and out of bounds. Laker ball. Now Harper 
just holding it out there, looking to run some clock. Ten seconds on the shot clock. O'Neal and Grant Fousen. So they're going to continue to make Shaq make free throws. And again, it's not so much what it's going to do for this game. But if he misses a few free throws at the end of the game, even though he made seven in a row, you know, they're, they're trying to plant the seed that he's going to have to make free throws. Now, obviously, the rule you were talking about doesn't apply here in the last two minutes because that's not an off-the-ball foul. Shaq had the ball, and they fouled him as soon as he received it. He's got 41 points. In the game now, remember, we talked about in the open of our show that the Blazers had done a better job than anybody in the NBA of slowing down Shaquille O'Neal. He'd averaged only 20 points a game in the regular season. Kobe Bryant, Ron Harper going out to a huge hand. Not big numbers by Kobe by any stretch of the imagination, but a very good floor game. Robert Ory was terrific. Ron Harper, the intangible man as he always has been in the three championships for Chicago and also for this team. Today, Shaq has doubled his regular season average against Portland. He averaged 20.5, he scored 41. Genteel chant starts here at the Staples Center, directed at the Trailblazers. O'Neal misses, and the bigger O'Neal rebounds. Well, Travis Knight is in the game to come in for Shaquille O'Neal. I don't know whether he'll get in the game or not. Well, maybe the Lakers will take an intentional foul eventually, so Shaq gets the ovation that he deserves. O'Neal with a jumper from the edge of his range that's no good. Jermaine O'Neal the rebound. Ramsey Wells in the front court. Fires a three. Fox grabs the rebound. Well, Bob, in game one, the gauntlet has been laid down. The Lakers were terrific. Rasheed Wallace gets ejected. We've had Hackashack. He shot 20, what, five free throws in the fourth quarter. 27 for the game. The Lakers go up 1-0. And game two, Portland must win. Because if they don't... Simple math is they'd be faced with having to win four out of five against a Laker team that looks pretty good today. 4 Shaquille O'Neal, 41 points, 11 rebounds, seven assists. Here he is with Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Shaq, first of all, we got to talk about this hack of Shaq. What was your initial reaction when that started happening? I think it's just a total amount of respect to my game. It's a shame when the other coach has to cry and the other big man, who's also 7 foot 330, has to cry, weigh in and flop. It's just a respect to my game. But it hasn't worked all year, and it still ain't going to work. Initially, were you upset at it? I mean, does it upset you? I don't get upset. You know, it's just uh, I need to uh, go around, take my time to make them. I mean, I'm known throughout my career to hit one, so now I just need to start hitting two. What was going through your mind every time that you made one coming back down court? You looked over at Dunleavy. I wasn't trying to, you know, be disrespectful. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to let the whole world know that that's not going to work ever. All right, Jack. Back to you, Bob.